All right, it is radio swap day. I know that may be a little confusing to you. We are switching from 28X, actually just JR, to Jetty. Now, what we're switching on is the Boomerang Ranger we built about a year ago. Uh, we initially set that aircraft up on a JR system and we are now switching over to Jetty. So with the new projects in the queue, uh, Jurgen decided to switch over to a Jetty DS24. And part of that was, of course, uh, that's what I'm flying now as well too. And it kind of just makes sense with some of these more complicated aircraft. Ranger was initially set up on an XG14, I think it was what it was. And I guess I'll preface as well too that um, the radio and the, um, the receivers and, and everything that's coming out of this plane will be for sale. So if you are interested in it, contact me. It's all brand new stuff. It's all really good quality stuff. We've got three flights on it, I think I did when I made the, uh, the Ranger, so. So we've got an, a JR11 BPX Pro. That's what's currently in there. And we've got it paired up with a T14X4 Chrome with the CNC gimbals. These are the same gimbals as was in the 28X. So that's the stuff that's coming out of the airplane that will be for sale. And what we're putting in the aircraft is we are obviously using a Jetty DS24. That's the, the flagship radio, the, the control system for the aircraft. We will be installing a Cortex gyro. So it's gonna be very similar to what we did on the U2 over there. That's uh, essentially what we're doing, we're copying that system. So it's also gonna simplify this aircraft a little bit and it's gonna make it a little bit more like my Ranger, which is right there, which is uh, uber simple setup and uh, it's gonna be nice. So let's dive in to the steps required to swap radio systems. All right, so much like the ultimatum that we put together, this setup is gonna be very similar. So we've got an SBEC 30, which is gonna be our primary power source for the aircraft. We've got a Rex 12 with the 40 centimeter dipole antennas. This is our primary receiver. We're also gonna have a Rex 7 in there just as a backup receiver. And the Cortex Pro, of course, is going in there. And we will operate the SBEC off of a remote switch, which is a cool feature of these things. So step number one for all this stuff is we wanna make sure we connect it to the Jetty Studio on our computer and update everything. All right, so all of our products are updated. So that part's done. Now we have to create a new model in the radio. Gonna be very simple. We'll just copy my Ranger. So all we do is go to the Ranger, hit copy. Okay, so we have our Ranger copied. So we will select that one. Ranger. There we go, copied. So what we'll do is we'll go into the radio now and we're gonna reset everything to zeros. So all of our servo travels and everything, we wanna start with a clean slate but we have our channel alignment done now, which is part of the uh, most of the battle. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we'll pair our primary receiver. So we'll get that done. Here we go, that's done. So we've got everything set up here. I'll just show you exactly what's going on. So we've got our uh, primary battery coming into the SBEC right here. That SBEC is feeding the Rex 12. We've got our remote switch here plugged into the SBEC. Okay, so now I'll just show you guys that this all works. So everything's off right now. We've got our locked switch, which is right here. So we'll turn that to the on position, the red light on the switch. So switch turns on and the SBEC turns on. So we've got our basic setup done here, which is a step in the right direction. We know how things are gonna be laid out. So normally I would make a layout for the channels and stuff, but because we're starting fresh, I'm not gonna worry about that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the 11 BPX JR unit out here, and that is going to give us all of our servo leads and everything and a, a, a good first step. Okay, so we've got everything out of the aircraft. Now things got a little bit simpler when we're switching to Jetty, which is great. So because we set up the previous uh, JR setup on XBus, we had a couple converters in there. So those are uh, also going with the receiver setup. And we took our receiver setup out and this is, uh, this is it here. So um, that's good. We're gonna set that stuff aside. Now what we're gonna do is we need a plate to mount our receiver to, our jetty receiver. So what I've done here is I've cut a piece of fake carbon material 
and drilled the same hole pattern that this was mounted on the side of the fuselage with. And this plate will just mount onto the wood that we previously glued on the side of the fuselage. And this gives us a location to mount our receiver setup, which is nice and clean and simple and very similar to where it was before, so our wiring should all match up very closely. Now we do need to make a tray or a plate for the Cortex as well, so we'll have to make one of those up. And the Cortex, I believe, we're gonna put the Cortex right in this area right here. Again, keeping the wiring simple and clean. There's our wiring right there, so we don't have a lot of excess with this aircraft, but as long as we're keeping everything electronic-wise similar, locations will be good. All right, so a little more progress here. We've pulled the tank out. I actually forgot how I mounted this tank. So the Velcro is like super strong and then we have one Velcro strap over top of it. But uh, the reason we gotta pull the tank out is we have to redo the battery situation here. So we're gonna be powering this aircraft with exactly the same batteries as the Ultimatum, the U2 from uh, Hispano Aviation up there. So this is the setup right here. I actually pulled these out of the Ultimatum. There's no reason to get another set of batteries when these are the perfect ideal batteries for this, uh, this setup. So the uh, 11 uh, three cell LiPo is gonna power everything on the aircraft, including the turbine. And then this is the battery for the lighting system. So very simple battery setup again, um, but we need to change the mount because this old mount wasn't quite wide enough. So because we've got these lovely devices, what a fabulous time to use the 3D printer. Now I have been using these, uh, using the printer in the background a little bit, but haven't really said anything. Um, I made these from a raw design. These are fuel filler holders. So we use these on some of the customer planes. These get glued in place and the filler nozzle rests inside here because it's a special setup. So this is kind of cool. It's just basically a round tube with a bottom on it and it's got a flat spot on it and it's uh, got a hole in there. So ultra simple, I designed this um, from in CAD all by myself and it was like a pretty rewarding experience. So we're gonna come up with a battery holder for these guys and uh, we'll see how this works. All right, so I drew up the battery holder in, I think it's called Tinkercad or something like that. Uh, pretty simple program to, to figure out. And we are on our way to printing the battery holder. So it's gonna take a while, six hours and one minute. So it's uh, more of a tomorrow thing, but we'll uh, let this go ahead and see if it needs any adjustments. It's printed four layers so far, but it's 100 uh, millimeters tall. So it'll be four inches tall or a little bit over. So definitely pretty cool to be able just to whip something like that up uh, in a program and hit print and have it print. I think that's, uh, Pretty neat, we were definitely missing out on some stuff without a 3D printer. Okay, so we know where the battery holder is going. It's back here. We're gonna cut the uh, remaining two uh, pieces of wood off. And what we'll do is we'll just lay our tank back down and that'll give us the ability to work in the front end of the aircraft. The battery holder is printing away. I actually stopped it and made some adjustments to it. So now I, everything's working out well and I'm happy with it. So. That is continuing. So we've got the Cortex mounted. Now with this system the way it is, our primary surfaces are going through the Cortex. So we've got uh, elevator, aileron, rudder, nose wheel. So channels one through six are plugged into the Cortex. Now we're starting to work on our power system here. So we're gonna have our primary battery plugging into this lead. Uh, what I've done is marked this lead right there while it was installed in the aircraft. And so this plugs into the, the ECU, which is right here, goes over, down, over that way. So what this is, is this is our mark to split off. So we're gonna split the wires here. We're gonna have this power also feeding our BEC, our BEC, and that's uh, really what it's splitting off to. So between our turbine and our power system, on the aircraft. Now on the other side of this back, so this is gonna be connected to that joint I was just telling you about. So the other side of the BEC, we're gonna split this wire here. We're gonna have this little wire tied into here. That's gonna feed the gear system. And then this is going to feed our Rex 12, which is our primary power system. So that's gonna be connected like that and this lead will just be coming off and plug into the, 
gear system. And then from back here, we'll just have another lead coming forward from the other battery, and that simply plugs into a servo lead like this, which powers the lighting system. This actually brings up a really good question I've been asked a few times uh, from different folks about why I don't use solder sticks in this scenario uh, that I'll show you now. And they're just not ideal for this scenario where you're going to like uh, two or three wires down to a single wire. So we've got the power coming in here. It's going to split off to our turbine and it's also going to go through the SBEC. That is switched on and off by the remote switch and the power goes to the receiver, which is going to be our Rex 12. And we've also got a little split or pigtail coming off there. And this is going to power the landing gear setup. So that is our wiring harness for the main power all done up. Okay, so we've got our Cortex installed. We've got our Rex receiver installed. We've got the Cortex programmed. Now what I like to do when I'm dealing with the Cortexes is always refer to the big manual that you can print online. Um, there's a couple different scenarios depending on what you're setting up. And it's always really good to refer to the sheet because I often use this setup here with central boxes. And then when I do this setup that we're doing in this plane, where you've got a receiver going in, your first six channels going out. Um, it's a little bit different than, the, than this version. So I like to just recheck the instructions and reference them. And it just makes setting them up really easy. So Cortex is installed. We've got all of our servos plugged in and working. So that is done. All right, our battery holder is printing away, doing a good job. We are at about 50%, 55%, and she's looking beautiful. Okay, so now with all of our wiring done, uh, and sorted out anyways, uh, things get a little bit easier now. We've got all the wires run from the gear side and the turbine side, everything's run underneath the board. We gotta clean that up a little bit, but that's a huge step to get done, and I'm very happy about that. So we're gonna wrap it up for tonight. Tomorrow, that battery holder will be printed, so we will install that battery holder here, move the tank back as far as possible, and then we'll start working on cleaning everything up. And then probably the biggest step we have left to do is the programming in the radio. All right, so our battery holder worked out perfect. I was a little concerned about the, uh, the overhang here, but worked out just fine, so this is awesome. So we're gonna have our batteries sitting in here like this is the intention, Velcro strap that goes over top of them, so extremely easy to get it in and out. So we're gonna get this battery holder now mounted in the aircraft. Okay, so we're gonna high saw this battery holder into place. We've mixed up some 20 minute high saw there, hard to see against the white, but uh, there you go. We've got an excessive amount because there's a bit of uh, roughness on that existing wood structure down there. There we go. So this is the important step because this determines how far back or where our tank is positioned. So this is roughly exactly the same scenario. All we've done here is push that tank forward, uh, given ourselves some clear working space. And now we are just going to let that set up. So I'm using the 20 minute stuff because I don't wanna wait till you know, half the day to uh, to have this stuff set up. So that's uh, what we're looking for. Now we've put enough down there, so it might be hard to see, but when you look down at the bottom, you can see where the uh, glue is oozing out. I don't think I'll capture that on camera properly, but anyways, guys, we're gonna let that set up now. We've got about five millimeters of space between the starter and the box here, which is good. Uh, so we're gonna leave that be, and then we'll start sliding the tank back and get it into position. Okay, so guys, so tanks in, that's all good. Looking awesome. Uh, so the way we're gonna run this uh, setup is we have our primary receiver plugged into our Cortex in port B, which is good. We're gonna run a secondary power supply from the Rex 12 to port A. So that's just gonna be our positive and negative wire, no signal. And then we've got our E1 port here on our Rex 12. That's where our second receiver is gonna plug into. 
So our Rex 7 here, which is gonna be set up as our second receiver, that's gonna plug into the Rex 12. Okay, so we've got a simple extension done up here to supply extra power to the Cortex. Okay guys, so we've got everything plugged in and verified here. I'll show you exactly what we're doing just so you have an understanding of how we set this up. So if we go into, we'll start from the beginning here. So we'll go menu, model, device explorer. We're gonna go into our Rex 12. And some of the important things here is we wanna make sure that we are, well, we're plugging into E1 for our secondary receiver. So E1 is set up to an EX bus input or backup. Okay, so that's step number one. You'll get some weird warnings while you're doing this. And then we wanna go into our Rec7. And on the Rec7, we have set E1 to EX bus. The way this comes stock is it's set to servo. So when you do this, you'll get the warnings generally through your, um, your radio. So we're gonna change that back to EX bus and that's good. So, um, so our backup receiver is plugged into the primary receiver. So we can confirm this as well too that it works. So we'll hit that and we'll go disable primary module. So now the primary module TX1 is disabled, but we still have control. Tells us our telemetry is lost. So, and then we can also disable secondary module, but our primary is still working. So, so there we go. So that's good. Um, some of the other things with this setup, SBEC uh, general settings, of course, because we're using a three cell uh, LiPo, we can set our BEC voltage to whatever we want. So we've set it to 8.4. So this aircraft is getting a consistent 8.4 all the time. And then if we go to our telemetry, we've got the telemetry laid out here, which is also a nice feature. So this can now be put on our main screen and you can see everything there that we've got um, as an option. So we'll go to timers and sensors displayed telemetry. So on page number one, we've got all of our basic stuff. Page number two, we've got our, our SWIWIN stuff. We can add some more. So telemetry, we've got our SBEC here. So we'll do our voltage. We'll add amps. Add output voltage. Add two milliamps as well too, we'll just add it all. And then now if we go back to the main screen, page number three, we've got all of our info there on uh, the SBEC. So right now we know that our primary packs at 11.52, outputting 8.41 volts, awesome. You can see our amperage spike there if we circle the sticks. Good stuff. All right, and as a last step in our install here, we're gonna use shoe goop and goop the wires. Now you don't need to use tons of shoe goop. It's really uh, just a little bit does the perfect job. So I'll go through and I will do all of our connections. And the whole point of this is just to prevent them from wiggling out, wiggling uh, at all really. And I'll do the cortex and the receiver. And all you wanna do is just put it somewhere where it's contacting the connector and the body of the device. And last thing to do is the ECU connections. Now these were all done previously, but I uh, had to undo them to rewire everything. So um, really easy to take them out, but um, not easy enough that they're just gonna fall out basically. Okay, so what we'll do now is we're gonna get the Ranger set up on a stand. We need to put the wings on the aircraft and go through all of our programming. Now initially, while we've been doing this, I've noticed that the ele elevators are backwards. That's all totally normal stuff when you're switching radio systems. I mean, there's stuff that's gonna be all over the place. And then we have to go through the relearning of the gyro process as well, because uh, the gyro right now is learned, but it's learned incorrectly. So now we're just gonna get into the setup portion. So Ranger is all set up now. Everything's plugged in, turned on. So the first thing we do when we're doing a swap over like this, 
uh, once we get to this point is we want to go through and center everything. So we're going to start with a clean slate here and we're going to center our rudder, our nose wheel, all of our surfaces. And that is our very first step. So we're just gonna go into the radio now and do it there. Uh, all the servos have been centered previously when this aircraft was built, but I zeroed out all the sub trim. So now we're just going through and we're adding our sub trim to get everything centered. All right, so we've got everything centered. We've got all of our uh, servos moving the correct direction. We've confirmed that, which is good. Now, all of our dual rates that we've got in there, they're all set up from my Ranger, So that makes things really simple. And I'll just show you here. We've got all those flight modes set up and gyro on and off set up just like normal. So we're gonna keep those where they are and uh, I think we're happy with those, those settings. Okay, so now that we've got all of our travels and everything set up, we're gonna start off with programming the gyro. So what we need to do is take a bind plug. We're gonna put it in the programming port in the Cortex, and we're gonna turn the Cortex back on. So we'll turn our whole entire system back on, and we should go into the programming mode now. So it's flashing red, flashing white, double bump. So we go right aileron, left aileron, forward elevator, back elevator, right rudder, left rudder, and gyro off. There we go. So we'll turn our plane off. Pull the bind plug out. We'll turn our plane back on. And it should go into the normal boot up mode now. There we go. So we're all good. Now we'll confirm. Okay, so everything's moving backwards. Now there's a good solution for this. All right, this is important. So the standard way the Cortex mounts is the outputs point forward. We're backwards in this case and we haven't allocated for that yet. So we'll go into our radio, model, device explorer, Cortex Pro. So number one, digital servos. Uh, socket orientation, upright front, that is incorrect. We wanna be upright rear. There we go. We're not using dual RX, even though we are, but there's only one RX plugged in to the Cortex. So we'll hit okay, escape out of that. And what we will do is we will program it one more time. Okay, so now turned on one more time. And now, oh, gyro's off, gyro's on. There we go. So our aileron's moving the correct direction. When we lift the surface, it should move in the direction we're lifting the surface. So that's working. Stand behind the plane, lift the elevator. The elevators are moving up. Move the tail to the right. The rudder moves to the right. And lastly, we just confirm that the nose does that. So the nose is backwards, right? If we move the nose to the right, the wheel or the steering should bring it back the other direction. So that is good. All right, guys, final two things for the Boomerang Ranger is we want to do a test run with the aircraft. We've got a new radio system. We want to plug in the GSU and run the engine, make sure everything's good with that. And then the last thing we'll do is our CG checks. Now we should be very, very close. Um, We'll see how things work out, but uh, I suspect we haven't really done a whole bunch of changes, but we'll do the test run first. And reason for that is because we want some fuel in the fuel system before we CG the aircraft, because we want to be in a landing condition, a landing amount of fuel. And then we will check our center of gravity and see how it works out. All right, so we're ready to test run. I got the Velcro installed on the battery holder here and I'm very happy with how this all worked out. 
nice and simple solution, nice and solid. The batteries aren't going anywhere. And uh, that's great, just super simple. So a couple of the things that we're looking for while we're doing this test run is we're gonna be looking at the telemetry data on the radio from the SBEC 30. And what we're looking for is voltage drops and, and that kind of stuff. And then we'll have our GSU plugged in as well. And that GSU is gonna tell us the turbine data. We'll just see if there's any complications, interference, and uh, any issues. And we'll do a test run on this engine. Okay, now we will reprogram the turbine because we've got a different setup now. And let's start it. Okay guys, that worked out awesome. Engine ran beautifully. Okay, the only thing that we need to add or change after the test run was our telemetry from the Swewin turbine. So because we had it on my Ranger, wasn't originally set up on this Ranger, we needed to run a line so we can get our Swewin telemetry. So now we've got that plugged in and we're all good. All right guys, and that wraps up the radio swap on the Boomerang Ranger aircraft. Really not overly complicated, but we did have to do some rewiring on this aircraft to, uh, to make it all jive. But uh, more simple aircraft, uh, I think it's gonna fly better. We've got a better setup with the Cortex uh, taking care of all the gyro for everything. So really excited to, uh, to see this thing airborne again. And I think it's gonna be a beautiful flyer. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you list them down below. You can always reach out to me via email, the lighter side of rc at gmail.com, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.